Hey there, gang. I uh, thought I'd uh, do a quick little video here on uh, We Happy Few, uh, the Battle of Agincourt, which is uh, set in 1415, I think it was. And in fact, in October. So, um, <clears throat> so I've got a little bit of a cold, so you have to bear with me. And I'm sitting in a hotel room, which is awful fun. Hence the slightly quieter voice. Uh, so this game is uh, the Shields and Swords system, and it's a pretty straightforward game. Uh, all the units can move one, one two, or three hexes. <clears throat> and in this case, that kind of works out because we, you know, we've got muddy terrain, so the cav is moving about the same speed as the infantry. And it does a couple of uh, things that are pretty interesting. So if you recall from my other write-ups or video on uh, the shield and sword system, uh, you you have these chits and you can move or fire or rally or whatever the case may be, or combat. And uh, you, you, you allocate your chits, uh, you have five chits, and you allocate what you want to do for the turn based on uh, you know, the chits you have, and these all are two-sided, so you can do a double move, or a double fire, or a double rally, whatever the case may be, and it'll have different uh, different uh, impacts. And so one side will put their chits down, move their units, and fight their units, and fire their units, and away they go, and then the other side will uh, put their chits down and do their thing. So in... Uh, in this particular battle, what they've done here is with the with the stakes, they're kind of you know just on the map here, drawn in, drawn in. Uh, you you have this uh, mechanic where if you're four hexes away, so one, two, three, four. If this guy was here, uh, the first hex there's this longbow range, right? This longbow. Uh, what's the term they use? They have a specific term. Bear with me for a sec. Yeah, archer, English archer approach zone. So once I move over in here, the first hex, nothing happens. But when I move into the next hex, I am disrupted. And if I move again, I am uh, reduced. And if I move again, I would be eliminated. So uh, you can't move four hexes in a turn, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, this guy's here. So that was the first hex he moved into. Uh, so that kind of effect uh, replicates that uh, massive fire effect of the of the archers, and then when you get to the so that's the this is what the uh, the French did first turn. This is they did a double move, and they moved this wing up, and so these are all the disruptions from uh, and reductions from moving into those zones. And oh, hang on a second, <coughs> I need some water. <coughs> Uh, and uh, then they also uh, had their, their they did a double fire which just gives them a bonus on their fire uh, we get to add one to the die roll and so we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. yeah nine attacks and uh, if you roll a six or uh, get end up with a net with a net result of six that inflicts a hit. So we've managed to disrupt and, uh, and reduce quite a few units, right? So it's kind of cool. There's also cavalry charges in this and there's some other things going on. So anyway, just a quick little look at the game, try to give you a feel for it. Uh, a couple little things that are a little, you know, probably, you know, ahistorical or, or atypical of the time. You can move through formations. So I can move infantry through a cavalry formation here without any you know, movement effect or anything like that. Uh, and I can also, uh, uh, I can also, what was the other thing that I thought was a little awkward? Um, I, uh, no, I think that was the main thing, actually. Uh, the, and the command and control thing is, is done by the, the color coding of the unit, so the, each of these is, uh, is all considered a wing. So you'll notice the different colors. So it doesn't have any leadership stuff in it which would be kind of cool perhaps to have some leaders in here i don't know how that would apply to the game rules necessarily anyway uh we'll move on to uh the second turn and i think what's going to happen here is once i get when what happens with these longbow ranges uh, uh approach zones is once you get someone adjacent 
that means that the longbow approach zone is no longer able to be used and so he's going to have to only fire at this guy or combat with this guy so the idea for the French is to uh, advance into the zones now one thing I'm not clear on is I'm already in a zone and I've already taken disruptions or and losses and I move one hex again does that mean that uh, I'm starting again for the first hex or because the first hex has no effect I think it would just you would just continue taking losses that would probably make sense otherwise these guys are going to overwhelm these fellows pretty quickly uh, we might try both ways and see what happens okay I'm going to let you guys go. Talk to you soon.